All right, we're gonna get started. Um, hey, Jan. It's our 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time class, and uh, emphasis will be on food combining and on meal ideas, uh, but we will go over the lifestyle some today. We, we want to go over the lifestyle a little bit, uh, go over the rules. We got a lot of new members, and uh, I've been asked to look at a few, few of their journals, and I have, and uh, I can tell that some of the members are not realizing that there's also a structure to how we eat these foods. It's not just, hey, we put corn and chicken together and it's okay. There, there's a daily, uh, some daily disciplines that we need to follow and we'll unpack that today. So let's get started with some housekeeping. My name's Travis Martin. I've lost over hundred pounds on the program. I've come off all prescription medications. The program's changed my life. It's been a blessing and, and the honor of a lifetime to have been able to help tens of thousands of others uh, overcome food addiction and obesity. Two thirds of our population is classified as overweight, obese, or morbidly obese. And it doesn't have to be that way. We can fix it with a practical, sustainable, and fun lifestyle. We don't need diets. Diets don't work. Anything we start with and we can't stick with forever is just a waste of our time. So we want a lifestyle. And we want one that's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a hardship, so to speak. Once you get your mind right, Shibboleth is not a hardship. It's, it's very easy. It's easy to follow. We just focus on the great tasting foods combined the right way, foods that we get at our local grocery store. It's hard to believe that combining foods from your local grocery store can be the most powerful diet if you were dieting the most powerful diet and weight loss program known to man but it is there's never been a program like Shibola, for glory to god uh that is that works this well that's this healthy that really a reasonable person can't even blow holes in what we teach because we exclude no whole food whole food food you know the only time that we really come up against some uh professional criticism is when uh, professionals in the medical community see that we approve um, something like a Diet Coke. We approve it. We don't push it. We want to meet people where they are. Uh, we want to meet them where they are and help them overcome that in the future. And we want them to be able to lose weight without having to totally get rid of everything they've been relying on for years. You can do support both in a whole food way you don't ever have to purchase a single item that has an artificial sweetener in it or a single item uh that's fat free yeah i mean you can do this program without all that stuff but we approve every single food that we can and then tell you whether it's good whether it's great or whether it's optimal uh we we approve every food we can so that you have so much variety that you can make this an amazing lifestyle and you'll never need another diet again. So come go with us. We'll do you good. Before we go any further, do I have any brand new people with me? This has been your first week. Kathy, I'm sorry. I see that on Facebook that you're saying the Zoom link is not working. Anybody else have a problem getting in the Zoom? We, we got about 50 people in here, Kathy. I'm not sure why it wouldn't be working. Maybe uh, I don't know if I have an assistant with me today on Facebook. Hey, Nicole. Yeah, sorry about that, Kathy. Maybe you can hang out with us on Facebook. Uh, I don't think I have an assistant with me today. If I do, maybe they'll see your, your comment, help you get in the Zoom room. Okay. Looks like it's mostly experienced members, so feel free to ask questions. We don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of our, our uh, uh, new members here. Looks like mostly experienced folks. So you may have some questions as we get into uh, this overview uh, of, of our program, because a lot of you are going to know a lot of this stuff, but it bears repeating, okay? So first off, our program doesn't work unless you live by some daily disciplines. Now, these da daily disciplines are not hard to achieve, not, not with a made-up mind, but you have to be willing to follow these daily disciplines if you want to get into efficient fat burning mode and stay there, okay? 
So anybody want to help me out? What are the daily disciplines that we live by? We call these daily disciplines, we call them a perfect day. Bible says, be thou perfect. And when you can't, there's grace. And we have those days too. They're called holidays. We have perfect days and holidays. There's no in-between. If you so much as lick the cheese dust off a Dorito, it's allowed, but it's a holiday. If you eat the entire bag of Doritos, it's one holiday. It's a day of grace. You can plan your holidays, work hard, play hard, or you may have some accidents, and that's okay because there's plenty days of grace. Hey, let me ask you Christian folk this. Do I have any born-again believers here? Any born-again believers? Since you became a born-again believer, you don't have to tell the specifics. Since you became a born-again believer, have any of you sinned? Have, has anybody fell short and sinned? I do. I do. I do. Do you do it willfully and on purpose or is it an accident? Sometimes it's willful, but not often. Yeah, you, you, make some, you have some accidents. Does that mean you're not a Christian? No. Just because you, you sin... You're learning, you're growing, you fall short of the mark, fall short of the standard, doesn't mean that you're not a Christian. As a Christian, we're not supposed to have a lifestyle of sin. Does that make sense? As a Christian, we're going to sin, but we shouldn't have a lifestyle of sin. Should not have a lifestyle. It, look, if you have a lifestyle of willful sin, you can say you're a Christian all you want to, but you're falling well short of the mark from the way I understand it. I sin, but I'm not willfully engaging in a lifestyle of sin. Okay? Your eating lifestyle should work the same way. Once you know to do better, to do it not would be sin to you. So if you're going to learn with me today, if you're going to learn some some. You're going to learn moderation. You're going to learn how to food combine, and you need to lose weight. You may not want to hear this today because you're going to know to do better after today. And to do it not would be sin. You'd be going against yourself. Are you with me? So we've got days when, when we, we're going to have a hog trough day. We're going to have that hog trough day but that's just one of our holidays. How many holidays do we get a month? This is what makes the program trusted. This is what makes the program work. We get six holidays a month or 72 a year. If you're trying to get your life back, if you're trying to live a more a healthy and well life, and, and you're like me, you had eaten yourself into oblivion, and now you've got a made up mind and you're gonna do better, is it fair? If would it is it fair if you if you can get your life and health back? Would it be fair to limit yourself to seventy two holidays a year? Does that feel like a fair program? I think that's fair. We, I mean, we've got we've got to uh, you know we ate out of balance for a long time, and now all we got to do with a made up mind is eat a little better for, for a long time, right? And then we're going to get our life back. When we get into maintenance, we get 12 holidays or 144 a year. 144 holidays a year. What does that mean? There's 365 days a year. I get 144 because we got to get out of weight loss mode. We got to ex expeditiously get to maintenance and start living life, put this problem behind us. So I've got... Um, 221, I need to have 221 perfect days and limit myself to 144 holidays. This is barely, check this out, this is barely doing the right thing more than the wrong thing. You're just doing a little better. You're doing the right thing a little more than you're doing the wrong thing. Think about that for a minute, children. 
and you're going to be able to maintain. For me, that looks like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm, I'm working hard. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm playing hard. There's pleasure in a lifestyle, living, living an eating lifestyle unto the Lord. It's not suffering. If you think this is suffering, it's because your mind is not made up. That's the only reason you could think the Shibboleth lifestyle is suffering. Your mind isn't made up. You might be addicted to suffering. Is anybody concerned that they personally are addicted to suffering? You don't have to raise your hand. I know. Has anybody ever had a, a really bad toothache for a long time? Do you know what I'm talking about? This is a couple of bad examples. You ever had a bad toothache and then you get the tooth pulled and the, to the pain's gone, but you miss the tooth? <laughs> what about this? Has anybody ever been in a bad relationship? It's, it's horrible. It's just, it's a terrible relationship. And then that person's gone and you miss them. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Sometimes if we're not careful, we get used to suffering. We become addicted to suffering. If I'm, when I was toting around 300 pounds, an extra 100 pounds on my frame, I got used to it. It ain't like I got up one day and all of a sudden I was toting around 100 extra pounds. That would have been horrible. But I put on ounces a day over the course of years until all of a sudden I'm over 300 pounds and my BMI is so elevated, my pancreas can't keep up, my liver can't keep up, uh, my heart can't keep up. Now I'm dealing with all these, these warning signs of premature death. It just, it didn't happen overnight. It crept up on me. So I was used to toting around that weight. It's amazing what you can get used to. You can get used to suffering. Okay, don't do that. So holidays. If I so much as lick the cheese dust off a of Dorito, that's a holiday we've established. We get plenty of days of grace. Now, perfect day. Y'all started naming them earlier. You got to drink your water. Can everybody here, yes or no? Can everybody here drink at least a gallon of water if it means life and not death? Can you all give me at least a half a gallon of water a day? Water in, fat out. No calories in water. There's zero calories per gram of water. That's awesome. It's a lot of bang for our buck. A lot of times when we think our we think we're hungry, it's really that we need some water. We need to stay well hydrated so the chemical processes that burn fat can take place with more efficiency. So we need the water, and then we got a journal. If you bite it, you write it, you hog it, you log it, you nibble it, you scribble it, please journal online or with the app. If you'll do that, when you hit plateaus, it's so much easier for our great team to help you move forward. But you got to journal. Listen, as I've been doing this 20 years, this little underground boy next door program. I've been doing it about 20 years by accident. The Lord called me to it. It started with a grocery tour in Rome, Georgia, and a big crowd followed. And next thing I know, I'm doing this uh, as a, uh, my passion, right? And over those 20 years, I've never known a single person to, that to look, had a significant weight problem to lose all of their weight and be able to stay in their ideal weight range without a journal. I've never known anyone to be able to do it. You have to have a journal. And you look, if you own a business, you would monitor your inventory closely. This temple, this sacred temple is much more important than some business. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We need to monitor everything that goes in not just into our body, but also in our mind. Is anybody noticing that they're really having to pay attention to their thoughts and their words because their thoughts and their words lead them astray? You got to stay positive. You got to stay hopeful. You got to look for ways in and, and, and talk yourself into it, not out of it. Some balanced thinking. Did anybody get my little short video yesterday uh, about imbalanced thinking? Did anybody get, get that lesson 13? 
imbalanced thinking is a big deal. We need to balance our thinking. It's so important that I talk to myself right and I stay balanced. So you got water, you got journal, and then we got food combining, which is the 11, the 11 a.m. hour, Monday through Friday, most of our time is spent on food combining. What does food combining, uh, what does food combining accomplish for us, everyone? What does food combining accomplish? It's so important to, nobody talks about it outside of Shibboleth very much, insulin control. Because see, when we have the fat bus, insulin is what we call the fat bus. Okay, and the fat bus is as the fat bus does. Appetite goes up. Efficient fat burning processing stops. And fat storage takes place. If we're trying to lose weight, we've got to eliminate that, and we do it through food combining. You, you can do that through whole food combining that you learn in this class. You can do that through eating approved recipes that our great Kim Shiboleth has checked for you. You can do that by eating meal replacements that have the right protein, fiber, and carb ratio. So endless variety. Control that insulin with food combining. Then you have your portions. This is, this is another daily discipline. You have your portions. So for myself, I prefer this. I prefer eating off of my portion control plate. Uh, and I don't get up on the trough edges either. I put my whole food, my whole food meal, I put it right there neatly on my plate. If I don't have my plate with me, which I almost always do, I take my thumbs, interlock my thumbs, fingers together. I'm at a restaurant, put it right over that, that meal. If there's food sticking out around the edges or it's piled up uh, thicker than the thickest part of my hand, that's going home with me, and it's going to be fed to my little dog, Henzo, or it's going to be leftovers the next day. The other part of portions is your daily rations. For best best results how many eating episodes do i need to live within per day for best results up to three so three eating episodes this is a good one y'all a lot of people miss out miss out on this too three eating episodes a day should be what i strive for three or less if i'm not hungry i don't need three Travis, I thought we needed five, six small meals a day to keep our metabolism going. That is a lie of the devil. Just look around and see how that's working out for everybody across the U.S. that thinks that small grazing, small bites all day stimulate metabolism. Uh, it ain't stimulate much metabolism. We, we need plenty of time to digest our food. Each time we eat an eating episode, does anybody know how many phases of digestion there is after you eat? Does anybody know? Do I have any of my more experienced students here? That's right, Patricia. Good job. Four. Four phases of digestion. Just the first couple we need right at 12 hours to get through. And we're going to be eating before we have to fast 12 hours unless we're asleep. So... We, we can have up to three eating episodes spread out throughout the day. And if you are still addicted to grazing, you haven't been able to cut that out yet, then you can have up to one approved snack, up to one approved snack. And then if you still need more, you can have freebies. I don't like that, but you can do it and still have a perfect day on those days. Has anybody had a rough day this week, one of them stressful days, and you just, oh, my gosh, you just needed that food as comfort? You didn't need it physiologically, but it was like the only friend you had that day. It's a miserable comforter, by the way, but sometimes food is the only friend some people have, it seems. You're having a stressful day, an anxiety-laden day, then you might, maybe you did need more than three eating episodes that day. When, when we have three eating episodes, one approved snack episode, and we have freebies, 
unless we've got a lot of weight to lose, that's going to be more of a maintenance type day. Does that make sense? That's going to be more of a maintenance type day, unless you got a lot of weight to lose. In other words, when I was 300 pounds, I could have three meals a day, a snack a day, and freebies and lose weight. But after I lost 40 or 50 of that, I couldn't get away with that anymore. So we might as well start as soon as we can eating the way we're going to be eating once we get into maintenance. So we've adopted that as our lifestyle. Okay. So how would this look? I could have three approved meals in a day. I could have two approved meals and one approved snack. Uh, why, why would I differentiate? Actually, two meals and one snack is going to be better for weight loss than three meals. So I could have like a, a breakfast, approved ice cream for lunch, and then a nice approved dinner. Did y'all know that you could do that? Is there anybody that didn't know that you could do that? That you can have of your three, it doesn't matter to me of your first three, it doesn't matter to me if it's an approved snack or an approved meal or a freebie. It's an eating episode. If I limit to three or less, even if I have two, I could even have two approved snacks in one meal. What if I did this? What if for breakfast I had a health wise hot chocolate and then for lunch I had halo top ice cream? It's weird, but I could do it. These are pro these are full of protein that help me preserve muscle and metabolism. And then for dinner, uh, I had some ribs and green beans. Could I do that? Sounds pretty good to me. It's one day out of my life and, and I'm, I'm efficiently burning body fat. I preserve my muscle. I got plenty of protein in in that day. I'm just going to be blowtorching fat off my body eating like that. This is awesome. Then you have the timing rule. Here's another good teaching, teaching point. The timing rule, if you violate the timing rule, if you violate it and you don't spread your meals out four to six hours, that does not mean that you didn't have a perfect day. This is The timing rule is for optimization only, for best results only. Spread those meals out four to six hours or, or advanced topic, have a 16 hour fast. It doesn't matter to me if it's a 12 hour fast, but if you really want to do better, 16 hour fast, then I don't care about the spread. If you get every 24 hours of counting sleep, a 16 hour fast, I don't care about you spreading them out. But if I, if I don't get a 16 hour fast and I'm unable to spread my meals and snacks out four to six hours, it doesn't mean you didn't have a perfect day as long as you didn't go over your daily eating rations. Does that make sense? That's critical. Let me know if that makes sense to a few of you. Hey, Patty Bass, I'm back today. I feel better, Patty. Thanks for talking me off the ledge yesterday, Patty. Even Superman has to take a break. Yeah, let me say that again. So your timing rule is an optimization rule. It doesn't cost you a perfect day. The only way that, that timing, if you cannot spread your meals out four to six hours, as long as you don't go over your total eating episodes for the day that you're allowed, you don't have to call that a holiday. It's still a perfect day. So like if you had, let's say, let me give you an example. Let's say I had breakfast at 10 a.m. and lunch at 12 p.m. That's a two-hour spread. As long as you don't have more than your allowed eating episodes for the day, that doesn't mean that you had a holiday. Now, if you break any of these other rules, you should count that as a holiday. Does that make sense, Jan? Perfect, perfect. L lastly, and most importantly, for me, you don't, you don't have to include this one. You don't have to include this. I had someone say the other day, I would love to learn your program, but I'm agnostic and I get tired of all that religious talk, okay? First of all, I don't consider it religious talk. 
uh, I, I consider it um, life talk. Uh, without, without Jesus, this old boy has no life. And it, it's just part of me, whether you like it or not. And I'm going to just tell you that without Jesus, ain't none of us got nothing. So this perfect day doesn't matter a hill of beans if I don't commit it unto the Lord. So the last daily discipline is, Travis, remind yourself to give thanks for every bite you take. Eat unto the Lord because it's the Lord that sustains you. It's not this food. It's not the food that defiles you. It's not the food that makes you. It's what comes out of you. Do you have thanks? Do you have joy? Do you have love? That's how I center myself is what food has become an act of worship for me. It doesn't have to for you, but it has for me. I'm going to eat unto the Lord because the Lord is the one who healed me. So I give, that's the last rule. I give thanks. Now, here I've got, let me see, uh, let me raise some of this here. Hold on. So I now know what a perfect day is. I'm going to be tough with myself. The Bible says, the Bible says that we should buffet our flesh. It does not say we should buffet it. We're supposed to buffet our flesh. That means to be tough with our flesh, to admonish our flesh, to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So I've got, if I so much as lick the cheese dust off a dirty Dorito, that's going to be a holiday because after the lick goes the crunch, after the crunch goes the bag. Now, we all live in this times world where, where we count time, okay? I probably just ruined that marker. I should have dried my board better. We live in this times world and we all live with the calendar. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay? How many perfect days does it take to ensure that I'm in efficient fat-burning mode? And then I have something profound to say, <laughs> all right? It takes two. So online, when you're journaling online, you'll mark your days and you'll see in your calendar a couple of check marks, okay? After two perfect days, if I, on Wednesday, if I have a perfect day now, I've got fire. Fire! I'm in efficient fat-burning mode. I'm, my, my metabolism is shifting on the third day. My metabolism is shifting, and I'm burning fat. Now, be careful, because I know many, many people that their perfect days aren't really perfect, and they still lose weight. But guess what happens? If you develop bad habits and you're truly not having perfect days, but the program's so powerful, you're still losing weight and you think, oh, I don't really have to have perfect days. Patricia Hurt, what will happen to them, sis? What will happen if they don't start good habits and having real truth per perfect days? They lose pounds. What's going to happen? They're going to hit a plateau, ain't they, Patricia? They're going to hit a plateau. Let your yays be yay and your nays be nay. Let your perfect be perfect. Let your holiday be a holiday. There's no such thing as a lukewarm day on Shibola. If you, if you lose weight having so-so days because the program's powerful and you start thinking you can get away with that, you're going to get really discouraged later when you've now formed the habit of not having perfect days. You'll lie to and say, well, I'm having perfect days. Why am I losing weight? Your days truly, truly aren't perfect. Are you, does that make sense? I see so many people start out and they're not really having perfect days, but they're calling them perfect days. And they think, well, it works for me. It's working fine for me. And then they get down to that last 20 or 30 pounds they need to lose and they say it ain't working no more. It is working. You didn't, you didn't form those good habits early on, okay? Patricia says a plateau, if you ever get to maintenance, unless you won't never get to maintenance unless you fully follow. I agree. That's why I hit so many plateaus in my journey. Because when I started, 
uh, I thought at 300 pounds, I can have three meals, two snacks and freebies. And it worked until I got to about 260. And then I already had, it'd be better if I just started, I'm 190 now, 193 this morning. It, it, and the way I eat today, I wish I had started that way at 300 pounds. I'd got here a lot sooner. Make sense? I know I'm getting bad about asking make sense a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Bad habit. It's like going, uh, uh, uh. Now, let's say Thursday, my wife wants to go out and eat at the Mexican restaurant. And let's say that I don't carry my own Shibboleth approved chips in with me and I eat their chips. And I only have a handful, if that were possible. What kind of day is that? It's holiday. How many days does it take to get back in efficient fat burning mode? If I get back on Friday, which is harder on Fridays and Saturdays, and get back on Sunday, I'd be back in efficient fat burning mode by Sunday. And then let's say Monday, this is life. I'm in efficient fat burning mode, efficient fat burning mode. And then Thursday, I stay in efficient fat burning mode. And Friday, I have a holiday. And Saturday, I have a holiday. And then Sunday, I get back on. Monday, I'm back on. And by Tuesday, I'm in efficient fat burning mode. What we want to see is the fire. In that online calendar that I've provided for you, that the good Lord has provided for you through me, you, you've got, when, when we start in, the, in a month, and we can see a lot of these fire days, we are burning the fat now. We're living a proper lifestyle. We're living a proper lifestyle. Isn't this amazing, everybody, that you can live your lifestyle one day at a time. Do your best one day at a time. And, and as you advance, right now we're just talking about a perfect day. Are there days, and James, I'll get to your, your question in a minute, are there experienced members? This We just talked about the daily disciplines for a standard perfect day that allows for amazing fat loss. Are, are, there, are there days where there are perfect type days that are more restrictive whereby we can lose more weight? Yes. We have tiger days, which is a more restrictive perfect day. We have lion days and shark days. These are more restrictive days. So if I get up, this is what I love about Shibby. If I get up and I'm feeling like I can whip a bear with a switch and I know the rules to a line day, I can lose up to three times more weight and feel much, much better after a day of a line or shark day because of all those amino acids surging through my bloodstream. So I'm feeling froggy. But then let's say on Friday, I'm not feeling so froggy. And I just, I go on back and I have a standard perfect day. What I love about Shibboleth, it's based upon your state of mind that day and your goals. This is what's awesome. Hey, Kim Obermeyer. Okay, James is asking about chips. What are Shibboleth approved chips? Well, let's go find out, everybody. I can name several right here and right now, but I want to teach you the right way. So let's go see. Let's go see if there's any that James might like. We go in here and we go to resources and we go to our great food library that Kim Shibboleth worked so hard on. And then boom, here we are. And I'm going to type in chips. And you could use other keywords too. You come up with some, some other options. I'm certain of it. But I'm just going to see what comes up under chips. I might even want to try a chip, but let's try chips. Okay, so James, I'm looking here and I see so many chips that are approved. Oh my goodness, show more. Let me just let let me filter this and reduce the size of it because I want weight loss chips. Now, what what separates these from a regular Lay's potato chip? A regular Lay's potato chip is bad fat and starch. And, and you're talking about fat storage, uh, going out of efficient fat burning mode for up to two days. These chips have the right ratio of protein and fiber to carbs, so we neutralize insulin. So I'm looking at these, and I, I'm like, I want the better for weight loss. 
So I go to minus one and minus three and I set. And I come up with some chips that help promote weight loss. Are you kidding me? What are these here? Let me pull these up. One package, oh, that says, never mind, that was a recipe. <laughs> Quest chips, let me go here. Quest chips, here we go. There they, oh yeah, I've seen those. It says this can be a snack. I can use them as a meal replacement and I can easy, even use them as a perfect pairing option. And I can find them on Amazon. I don't know if we have any in our e-store. Support us when you can. But maybe I, I, I don't have them in the e-store. I go to Amazon and get them. Let's go look at some others. Let me show you my favorite. These are my favorite because they're shaped like a corn chip. Ah, oh, this is another recipe. Let me find double bites. There they are. Double bites. Boom. One package as a snack. You know, I love to put Wendy's chili over top of these with, with some uh, fat-free cheese over top. You know, that you, you ever done that where you had the, the corn chips with the chili on top? Makes for a great meal replacement. But what, why are these so different? Look, you've got only three grams of fat, and you've got 17 carbs but 10 grams of protein. That protein... Because we're keeping the calories low, that protein is going to neutralize that carb impact. And if we don't overdo the portion, we're going to stay right in that sweet spot of efficient fat burning. Isn't that awesome? So cool. Okay. All right. And, and for those not sure about what I meant earlier with the calendar, I'm going to go to weekly timing chart, and here you can see my calendar, right? This is what I meant by EFB, okay? It, I can see that I'm on fire, and it gives you a little scriptural verse. If you're not using the journal, you're really missing out. This is my command central. So uh, every day, especially before bed, I'm zoning in here. Where am I at? How am I doing this month? And it shows I had fire. No wonder I'm having such a good month with my body mass shrinking. I'm getting ready for summer. And it gives me a scripture like today's scripture. Yesterday's scripture says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove to yonder place. And that mountain has to remove. That fires me up. This is, this is how I center myself. And I see what kind of month am I having? I've only had two holidays. If I want to have date night this weekend, I'm going to be okay because I've only had two holidays. I'm still living the lifestyle. I don't have a lifestyle of gluttony. It's obvious from, from this, this weekly calendar, weekly timing chart. It's how I live my life. How I hope to convince others to live their life. So the Household of faith can rise up. We can live more discipline, live more unto the Lord, live with more joy. The household of faith shouldn't be the sickest people in the United States, but I'm afraid we are. Let's overcome in the name of Jesus. All right, so I'm going to race this. I'm going to race that, and, and then we're going to look at Our food combinations. So I'm going into my advanced combination chart. I prefer to teach out of it. And I'm looking at those combinations. This is how we control insulin. And you can see the way we identify foods. Category down here in the legend, category one through seven. Condiments, meal replacements, perfect pairings, hemp hearts, hemp flakes, snacks, freebies, extras, and also there are recipes. This is how we identify food, and we do the food math and make sure that what we're consuming is going to control insulin and it's in the right portion. I've got the red column. Red column combinations are your fastest fat loss combinations. Yellow is a close second, and blue a distant third. But the blue column will be. For, for our long-term members, the blue column will be the most important column to your journey because it is to mine. 
It's what allows me not to gain my weight back now that I'm allowed more variety. It's what allows me to have potatoes and corn and long grain brown rice. It's what allows me to have my watermelon, cantaloupe, bananas, because I know what to pair with those foods. I know where they fit. I know where to pair them. So let, let's, let's commit a little to memory today, okay? So I've got category, category one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Can somebody name me three category ones? Absolutely, Michelle. Name me three category ones. Egg whites. Hey, ain't nobody on Facebook giving me no stars today. I want some stars. I ain't doing a good job if I don't get some stars. So egg whites, chicken breast, fish, and then you've got things like, and I'm going to do this for speed, you got things like turkey breast, pork tenderloin, low-fat cottage cheese, Greek plain yogurt, fat-free cheese, Kroger carb master milk, fat-free fair life milk, and the list goes on. You've seen the library uh, uh, earlier. It, it's huge. Category ones are in every column. Uh, you know, it, they, we want you to eat category ones because they're exercise on a plate. What about category two? What are some category twos? Leafy greens. Leafy greens, great. What else? Green beans and broccoli. Green beans, broccoli. Cucumbers, okra, squash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Celery, great. Uh, approved tortillas and approved wraps, right, Sierra? Healthy life bread, that would be. What about category threes? What about category threes? Potatoes, potatoes, corn, tomatoes. Long grain brown rice, et cetera. Okay, what about category four? What goes in category four, everybody? Approved bacon, steak, ribs, chicken wings, and more. Dark meat, that's right. What about category five? Give me two or three there. Berries. Bananas, apples, oranges, grapefruit, kiwi, any fruit except for avocado and tomatoes. Tomatoes, we eat more like category three, even though it's a fruit. Avocado is a fruit, but we eat more like a six. So I'll go on and put that avocado, category six. Pintos, black beans, red beans, nuts. Seeds, what about category seven? Easy one, shrimp, uh, oysters, crab, anything in a shell, all right? Fish is a category one, Miss Lisa. Lobster, you're right about that. That would be a seven, okay? So a seven, ding, ding, ding. A seven and a one work the same in the body. The only reason I separate sevens from ones, the only reason I separate it is because some people have an aversion to eating shellfish or have an allergic reaction to it. So I've separated it. So if somebody has that issue, they can just eliminate seven from their vocabulary. Then you have condiments. 50 calories or less, 5-2 and few rule. Then you have your cooking agents, MCT oil, ghee, coconut oil. Now, can I have olive oil? It's not an approved oil, but can I have it? Or vegetable oil, or margarine, 
Can I have it? We don't approve it, but can I have it? And still have a perfect day. Yes. But if you have it, ding, 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 teaching moment for all my students. If you have olive oil or any oil that's not approved on any of these, here's the key. You must not, on your plate, you must not have a category three, you must not have a category five, and you must not have a category six. If you have unapproved fats on your plate, we must eliminate three fives and sixes from the plate. Does that make sense? Now, that's one that really needs to make sense. So we have a restaurant rule. If we're eating out at a restaurant until we reach maintenance, you should not be having any threes, fives, and you should limit your sixes in a restaurant because they're not using MCT oil, ghee butter, or coconut oil. And then you got it, you got it whipped. Now it's just a matter of you putting together some approved combinations. Let's start with one and two and four and two. This is where every new student should start. If you start here, you're going to get momentum and you're going to be excited. Y'all seen all those combinations. It's not like you're going to run out of variety, but this is where we start. Is, does we, does, do we have anybody here that's familiar with basketball? This is your layup. When you hit those plateaus, when you're struggling, when you don't know what to do, go hit your layup. And that layup's going to get your confidence back. Okay? So what are a couple of meal ideas with one and two and four and two, everybody? Just give me a few before the 12 o'clock class. What are some ones and twos and fours and twos that I can put on this plate that will be like blowtorch on a plate. Let me get out of the way here. Steak and broccoli, that's a four and a two. Fish and broccoli, that's a one and a two. Chicken and green beans, one and two. Awesome, what else? Roast and green beans, four and two. Venison, steak, and asparagus. Uh, that would be a one and two. Egg white and spinach omelet. That's a one and two. Pork tenderloin and broccoli. A one and two in most cases. Sometimes that would be a four and a two, depending on um, the nutrition label. Eggs and approved toast. Uh, four and two. Pork chop and spinach, four and two. Tort approved tortilla and chicken, a one and two. Awesome. Y'all are killing it. It's just so easy. So watch. Then once we understand how to do that, is it hard to do a one, two, and three? Is that that hard? What would be a one, two, three we could have? Diane Malone, Reuben sandwich would be a, a great one. What's a one, two, and three before we leave this class? We can't have a three by itself. We got to eat it in the right combination based on the combination chart. So I just go up here and I have fish. I have uh, broccoli and I have potato. Boom. Beautiful. That's it, y'all. Then you, you've got an entire library of recipes. You're eating three times a day. The, the body fat's falling off. You're focused on what tastes good and what helps you lose weight. You're in a hurry. You grab one of the approved meal replacements that you can find at a grocery store. Like, perfect day right here. Fast food guide. You got it all. So I could have like a Mighty Muffin for breakfast. A Wendy's chili over a side salad for lunch. And then I could have fish, broccoli, and potato on a portion control plate. 
with ghee butter and fat-free sour cream for dinner and just watch the body fat fall off. Lisa says chicken and broccoli and carbonata pasta. Last night I had Brenda's lasagna. Brenda's lasagna, boy, that was delicious. Sasha made Shibboleth approved Brenda's lasagna using fiber gourmet pasta. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. And I get up this morning and I'm down more ounces. It's awesome. It's just living life, man. Work hard, play hard. Any final questions before I head to the noon Q&A class? In the, the noon class is open forum. Q&A, support, personalizing your Shibboleth program. I do want to remind you um, that we're brought to you by our lifetime members and our partners. We're a ministry first and foremost. Uh, there's no barrier to entry. We help everybody in the name of Christ. And we could not do this without our lifetime members and partners. If you're not a lifetime member or partner and God leads you to do so, We'd love your help in, in trying to serve the community of faith and help them learn how to eat and, and lose body fat with ease. So consider being a partner or a lifetime member. We have a ton of expenses every month to keep this, this thing afloat. And uh, we always fall short. If it weren't for our partners, members, and loans, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So please, if you can't become a lifetime member or be a partner at $5 a month or more, then please pray for us. You can do that. That'll be a, that'll be a good way to, to help us is pray for us. Got a lot of folks here. It's had a lot of success. Y'all have really inspired a lot of folks. Diane Malone, what an inspiration you are. Thank you, Sandra. God bless you, Miss Sandra. Love y'all so much. Okay. Well, I'm going to head to the next class. Any of you that want to join me, you're welcome to join me. Ham steak or something else. I see there. I can't tell Patricia what that O-R-E-N is. Um, anytime I'm in doubt about a meat, if I'm in doubt, I call it a category four. Anytime I'm in doubt, I call it a category four. Okay, y'all, I'm going to head over to the next class. Uh, you're welcome to come over there with me. Please tell somebody about Shibola today. Join our little ministry. Be a partner with us, and let's save our world and promote the name of Christ. God bless y'all.